Hi everyone, this is a Unity quick tip to uh, help you improve performance in your Unity game projects. Um, it's called object pooling, and I'm sure you've heard of it probably amongst mobile developers where they're dealing with really um, limited hardware. So basically the old methods may have been, and a method that's still used today, is to instantiate and then destroy an object like a bullet. Basically create it in the scene and then destroy it and remove it from the scene. And so the problem with that is, is it's inefficient and uh, within the code it creates garbage that the garbage collector has to come back and kind of fetch all of that up and remove it, what's left over with this instantiation and destroy. So object pooling is a technique where we just create all of these objects, you know, right away when the scene starts, and we keep like a pool or an inventory of them, and then we just turn them on and off and reset them and reuse them uh, when we need them, so we're not destroying or instantiating ever anything during the gameplay. So I'm going to show you a really simple way to do it here, and we're not even going to write a script or anything. I created a little folder in here called Scripts. I will put a link to this down in the uh, video description so you can just download this real quick. Um, this script is called Spawner, and I pulled it directly without modifying a thing from the Angry Bots project. Yes, the old Unity 3 um, Angry Bots project. And as you can see, I am in the new 64-bit Unity 5. Point, uh, I believe I'm in 5.321. Uh, so this works perfectly fine in Unity 5. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to show you um, how to set up object pooling for pretty much anything in your scene. So I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm just going to call it Prefabs. And we're going to pretend that our prefab is um, a bullet, right? Or uh, let's just make a, a sphere. And we'll, we'll uh, reset the position on that sphere and zero it out here. This is our bullet, quote unquote. And to give it some physics, it's already got a sphere collider, but we're just going to add a rigid body to it. And we'll set it to the interpolation to interpolate, just so it moves around a little smoother. And so we'll call this bullet. Um, bullets and projectiles are probably the most common um, object pooling sort of thing. Uh, particle effects and other visual effects are another one. So we're just going to drag that over into the prefabs folder. And now our bullet can be deleted from the scene and it's now prefab, right? Um, I'm going to look here out of this spawner script and we'll create an empty game object in the scene. And we will drag spawner onto it. Let's just call this our pool manager, right? This is the thing that's going to pool all the things. So we're not going to go into uh, however the Unity people wrote the script. Basically, the script is allowing you to assign game objects as prefabs to it here in caches. It's going to cache it all up front, um, and it's going to store that, and you can set how many objects you want to put in your pool. How many objects do I have to use? How many bullets will I have at any given time to use in the scene? Okay, how many particle effects at any given time for dust am I going to have, and stuff like that. So the cache is like, um, what object do I want to set aside a pool of objects? And I'm going to say, for now, just one, right? And it's going to say, what's the prefab? Well, it's bullet, right? And then it's going to say, how many do you want in the cache at any given time? And I'm going to say, let's just say, at any given time in our game, um, we're going to have ten bullets. Now, the interesting cool thing is you can set another cache up here, and we could add in something that wasn't a bullet in here, missile, or any other thing you want to use object pooling for. But for right now, um, we'll just do bullet. But you can have a lot of items in here. You can pool all of your particle effects, your missiles, your rockets. You could pool enemy AI characters. Uh, you name it. The sky's the limit. So rather than instantiating and destroying this bullet now, we're going to actually uh, pool it. And when I hit play... Um, so there's the pool right there. I don't even have to pause it. They're in the scene. They're disabled. There it is if I turn it on. And um, it's completely usable in the scene. It created the pool, right? There's all of them. And they're deactivated in the scene. So if I say I need 20 bullets all at once, um, there we have 20. The, the uh, index starts at 0 to 19, which is 20 objects, right? Um, if you only need five and your game's like really hurting for performance on some mobile devices, there you go. We have our pool of five. Now to test 
the pool's working. You see it there. You see the objects. But how do we use them, right? So I were just came up with a little tiny, super simple script. And uh, I'll just create another empty game object. It can be applied to anything. This is basically like, uh, think of this as your gun, uh, the foot, the feet that are going to kick up the particle effect of the dust, anything that's going to spawn an object that you want, right? We want to spawn this bullet. Um, this is going to be your own type of script. For me, it was just, hey, create a game object um, and spawn it at the transform position and rotation of this game object. I just, at the same object that the script was um, assigned to, right? And the way that you instantiate it, you can also use this in C Sharp. Not a problem, right? Um, you just need to make sure that you access it by calling spawner, which is this script and the spawn function inside of it. And that means, hey, don't instantiate this the normal way. Use the spawner, right? The pooling manager that we created here, which is called spawner. So we instantiate from that, right? We pool from that, not really um, instantiate, right? And it works in C Sharp. Um, there is a script compilation order uh, thing uh, between JavaScript and C Sharp. So if you want your C Sharp to be able to see um, this spawner JavaScript, uh, it can. You can use C Sharp and JavaScript just fine. Make sure this compiles first, which means put this inside of the standard assets folder, inside of a scripts folder, um, or I believe you can just go right here into execution order and you can. Um, add these and say which one executes before the other one, right? So add scripts in a custom order and drag them to reorder. Um, they can execute before or after. They are executed from top to bottom. So we always want the spawner to execute first because it's the JavaScript, right? And our demo example in my scene is, is, uh, is JavaScript, but in your case it would probably be C Sharp and you want it to be able to find the JavaScript. So as you can see here, you can do that with this um, execution order. Um, so it's pretty easy. So here's my gun or whatever and it's going to be spitting out bullets. Um, first off, let's uh, drag pooling manager over and just make a prefab out of it and remove it from the scene so we can see what instantiating bullets just looks like here. So there we go. Just an endless uh, supply. So this, and typically in your game, this would be instantiating and destroying, and there's going to end. You'd there'd be thousands of bullets, and then you'd have to destroy them, and each one would create garbage. And at the end, the garbage collection causes hiccups in your frame rate, causes can cause up to a one second pause in your game. You don't want that. So we're not going to do the typical instantiation. We're going to pull over a pool manager. We want five bullets. And here we go. It's just cycling through this pool right here so fast, actually. In fact, you can't even see it happening. But it's not using more than five, and it's using all the same ones from that exact pool. And if you say, all right, I'm using bullets too rapidly to only use five, I need to have access to like 10 bullets. Here we go. We're pooling 10 and using 10, and we're not, in, we're not instantiating or destroying in the traditional sense, so we're not creating that kind of garbage. Um, if you need 20 and you have a bullet hell, shoot 'em up game. Here you go, 20. Right? I found the bullets travel so fast. If you have a normal firing rate in your game, I can use um, about five. Right? I can use 10 or five. The bullet streaks by usually so fast it's gone before it was even fired, and you barely see a streak. 10's okay. You know, 10's pretty good. Um, so. And that's exactly how that works. And this is a script that you don't even have to write. Uh, you can grab that off the download link or just pull the script spawner out of the Angry Bots uh, demo. So that's basically a really easy way to do object pooling without spending any money or going through any complicated systems or tutorials or anything like that. Just grab the script, set it up like I did, set all your different caches for the objects you need. Um, I found that things like bullets, you need a low cache size because they go by so fast and they're gone before you know it. Um, things like particle effects, um, you might need a little higher cache size because you use quite a few particles um, or prefabs of particles to show things like smoke and dust. So 
you just balance this with, with whatever you need for the performance in your game.